Hey guys, so my name is Carmen Mohan and I am a small business owner and entrepreneur. Most of you are probably realizing, hey, why did you separate those two things? Aren't they the same things? And normally I would say yes, however today I'm going to say no. Why do I separate them? Because being a small business owner is a little bit different than being an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur means you can uh, run a business, however being a small business owner means that you probably have a brick and mortar location within your neighborhood, right? There has to be a different type of definition there for small business owners and those of us that own locations. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, a lot of people see me doing events or educating on business but they don't really know what I do. I've been investing in business since I was 21 years old, did my first business investment. However, I don't even count that one. <laughs> I totally failed. I was 21 years old. I blew all my money in like six months and totally shut it all down. So fast forward to becoming a business owner. Where am I today? Uh, today I rent, lease a office space, the old school style, right? And I have a brick and mortar storefront tax office location. So I can go in and tell you how difficult um, learning the tax industry, not being a CPA, I am not a licensed CPA. I can tell you how difficult learning the tax industry and staffing and building teams throughout tax office has been. But that's kind of not what this video is about. This video is more so about um, being a business owner, right? Doing it the old school way. I had to um, do it brick and mortar style. So um, there was a lot of different things that came into play when it came to building out my business that I feel like a lot of those core principles have been kind of like diminished with this whole new age and nuance of building online businesses. I currently am building my online business, but I think that my experience in the brick and mortar style kind of can help other new entrepreneurs or new online businesses kind of remember that they're a business, right? If we use some of the old school tactics or principles on building businesses, we may be able to build more successful long-term companies. Because I think a lot, of the, a lot of the entrepreneurs today are only thinking for today, for now. They're not really thinking legacy or long term. When you build a brick and mortar you, and you're, you know, you're looking for a retail space or a lease, what are you doing? What do those lease terms look like? They look like five years, they look like 10 years, you know, with option to extend. So when you're going into a brick and mortar and you're thinking about what's gonna be good in five years, what's gonna be good in 10 years, you have to think the long term versus someone that can build an online business for $500, there's not really no you know, stress or pain to leave and to not make it work. So it makes it a little bit easier to what? Kind of give up, right? So I, I think that there's a big difference within the two. Um, so lately I've been trying to figure out the best way to kind of like put all of my experiences and kind of make them relatable and uh, more so valuable to those online businesses, to those entrepreneurs, to those personal brands because I'm now building a personal brand as well and have been for the last two years but I started my business almost five years ago so the last five years of brick and mortar experience and hiring and firing and, and building teams and um, servicing hundreds of clients. My brick and mortar tax office services 800 clients, serviced 800 clients this past tax year and we will do over a thousand this, this year. So I think that a lot of those core principles or lessons that I've experienced, I could kind of turn them into a way to teach you guys, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, so let me break it down. <laughs> uh, just do a little quick overview on some of the a lot of the differences that I've noticed when it comes to building a brick and mortar compared to building an online business. Um, building an online business is going to take you what significantly a less um, a dollar amount to actually make it happen because you know you're only purchasing a domain, you're only purchasing hosting, you're only purchasing, uh, you're doing your own marketing, you know, through social social media. Um, a brick and mortar, when you go to look for a location, they're going to nine times out of ten ask you for what? A security deposit. If you're going through a broker, you may have to pay a broker's fee. That's already three, four to five months up front that you have to to secure the location. Once you get to that location and you secure the location, a lot of people don't know this right here, but you can negotiate. And I think with online businesses and, uh, and them you know, signing on to so many services that already have a set dollar amount, they forget the art of negotiation. Part of the core of a business person is what? 
being able to negotiate, don't you think? I think so. So a lot of people go into brick and mortars and don't even know that they can negotiate free months of rent depending on how bad the place is. If you have to spend $5,000 in construction, $7,500 in construction, don't you think the landlord should give you a month or two of rent? Yes, but a lot of entrepreneurs or millennials are those going to seek that they don't ever really get to learn that because they're kind of skipped over that either way neither here nor there you can negotiate two to three free months of rent depending on the landlord now he may say no but however in my experience I've noticed that most landlords say yes if you can provide them with an, a price quote of the highest contractor available that will be able to be your bargaining tool for you to bargain what your free months of rent. If you tell them I have to spend, and make sure you get the most expensive contractor, okay? Don't tell them I'm telling you this though. Make sure you get the most expensive contractor and once he gives you that bill for $10,000, you can bring that to your landlord and say, hey, this space may cost $2,500 for four months. I did pay you two months of deposit. Can I get the first two months free since I have to spend $10,000 to do it? Chances are when you have a bargaining tool in your hand, it's gonna what? Happen, it's gonna work. I promise you it works. I've done it plenty of times. I actually was just scanning a location two weeks ago for a girlfriend of mine who's trying to open a Medi Spa. We're gonna bring her on another video and, and uh, discuss that process. I'm putting together case studies because I wanna show you guys that a lot of this old school information still is relatable now. It just has to be kind of updated, right? Either way, so you can secure the location for free. What are some other things that you have to think about when it comes to standalone storefront locations? Visibility. Visibility is something we don't worry about online because online we build our own visibility, right? We paid sponsor, we do paid sponsored ads, you know, we jump in people's DMs, we do natural engagement, we do all those things to get us what? Seen, visible, right? The good thing about the internet is that you could be visible all over America. And when you're a storefront, you're only visible within the neighborhood. So visibility is a little more crucial when it comes to storefront locations. Why? because it's gonna matter a lot how many people see your sign, see grand opening. Why do you think people put large grand opening signs? Why do you think people put large inflatable balloons? Those are all old school tactics. There actually is a term for it, it's called guerrilla marketing. And I'm gonna do a whole nother video on that later on next week. But it's actually called guerrilla marketing. So there are a lot of tactics that you have to think about when doing a brick and mortar old school style. So visibility is one of them. I remember back in 2014 having to go online and research traffic views on how many cars were passing by this street, you know, per each angle so that you could know how many cars are going to visibly see your signage. Or, you know, then you have to buy and invest in such and the best signage that you possibly can to be able to be visible, right? And then depending on where your building is or where your lease is or where your storefront is, is gonna depend on what type of signage you can actually do. Like for instance, every town may have different specifications. Some may say you can only have a raceway track. Some may say it has to be a light up box. A lot of them are gonna have different specifications. Some may say it can't be more than three quarters of your actual awning. This is all information that we don't kind of really know. So for those of you that are building brick and mortar businesses, I'm gonna give out two free online coachings um, and I am looking for another case study. So if you do have a good idea, I would love to bring you on board as a case study. For those of you that don't know me, and I hope you like this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave me a comment or jump in my DMs and I definitely want to be able to provide the most value for you. If you have a couple quick questions, I'll answer it, but I'm definitely going to do one free, I'm sorry, two free online coachings for anyone that uh, likes and share this video. Make sure you share the video, send it to me, tell me about your business idea and what your questions are, and then that brings you in line to be able to submit for the free coaching. So make sure you guys reach out.